So, hello everyone. My speech will be in English because if I attempt to speak for more than five minutes in Romanian, it is an utter failure. So please bear with me. So, as mentioned, I am a student at the International School of Bucharest and I am 17 years old. And most of you would logically be thinking, what could a teenager possibly offer to such a diverse stage surrounded by authors and comedians and everything else? And to be quite honest, I don't know. I mean, my goal today here is to hopefully offer a speech that will remain with you even after this event is over. So, going back to the theme of the domino effect, I have just one word to add right now, and that is ripple. It's a very simple word, ripple. And usually it is associated with this idea of waves, how just one small impulse of a wind gust would create a larger and larger wave throwing through an ocean. And you see here, this idea of something very, very small just becoming greater and grander than you could ever expect is found in mostly everything around us. Take machines, for example, technology, a computer. You launch a command and a series of action follows it. Um, onwards from there, you get your outcome, your result, your command is fulfilled. So look around you right now. You find this pattern in human lives as well. I mean, how many of you right now can identify with the sequence of you're born, you go to school, you go to university, after some years of being a rebel, partying maybe, studying, you get a stable job and you think, I have succeeded in life, I have a good job, I am done with school, I am satisfied with my life as an adult. After a couple of years, start a family, have a kid or two, and then what? You stop there. So most of you here in this room are at one of those stages that I have just described right now. And what follows on from there? Well, every single one of us here has this in common, and that is death. Nothing can stop us from reaching this final outcome here. Every single living being on this planet ultimately gets there. So what is stopping you from living the best life you could possibly have, making the choices that benefit you as a person? Because we're usually told as children, don't be selfish, share with others. But what of your own interests? What about what is the best decision for yourself? And here comes this idea of how we enjoy skipping over small decisions. We find them inconsequential, not important. But take this following example. Say it is Sunday morning, and you realize you're craving a cup of coffee from the local Starbucks down the block. Instantly, when your body and your mind registers this very, very urgent and very important need, you have two options for yourself. Either you go, get a cup of coffee, or you don't. So see here, this to you seems unimportant. What's the consequence of this? A cup of coffee? It's not significant enough. But see it this way. What if on that day, you do decide to go out? You decide to get that cup of coffee. And while you're in line, you turn your head and you see a stranger, an attractive one. What if that one person being there at that exact moment in time could be your soulmate? And of course, you need to have a degree of faith and belief in destiny here, knowing that everything was somehow meant to be there. But none of that happens. Why? Because you stayed in. You didn't go out that day. You stayed at home. And see, it is out of examples like this, where the idea of how destiny never comes knocking at your door, you have to go and find it for yourself. You have to go and fight for it in your life. So see here, this idea of how we enjoy believing that we're not in control, that our jobs or our bosses or our families dictate over us, is completely untrue. We let these factors dictate over us out of fear of the consequences. We fear making a bad decision leading to even more bad choices. But is that true? You are your own boss here. You decide what you can and can't do or what your limits are. So why are you letting yourself stop you from reaching your true potential? Are you really, really satisfied with your own life at this point? Could you do more? I mean, look at the world. There are landscapes, cultures, people you should encounter. Instead, you prefer leading a more monotonous lifestyle, which is similar to that of waking up, going to work, time with your family, repeat. It's like a broken record. So this is my idea of how even a small decision as deciding to go out on a Sunday afternoon is powerful enough to create a much more significant moment in your life than you could ever, ever even imagine. So see here, the title of my speech is The Singularity of Destiny. And while it has a very, very nice ring to it, you don't quite understand what I mean by it. 
So let me begin by explaining what singularity is. It has two distinct definitions. The first one is just simply the state of being singular, alone. And yes, we are surrounded by family and friends, but after all, there is only one voice in your head, and that is yours. You make all the decisions, and it is always up to you. Moving on from there, the second definition of singularity refers to a more complex one in science and mathematics. Take a black hole, for example, the center of it. In the center of a black hole, we have infinitely dense matter. That is all we know about it. When we first discovered this idea of a black hole, we took it quite literally. We thought it was a hole, nothing else. And that is true. We know it has infinitely dense matter, but what is at the end of it? What happens once you cross that boundary? And to this day, we will never know. So moving on from this idea, you can link this to how we as humans have an infinite amount of possibilities, an infinite amount of potential. If only we were to explore this potential and step outside of our own boundaries, boundaries created by us. And see here, in space, we don't know much about it. It is uncertain, it's similar to life. As much as you try to be a control freak, you never truly know and can plan what will happen in say, five, 10 years. So then why not attempt to live rather than survive one day to the next? Because what tends to happen in our lives is Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays just blend into one another and they're the same thing, it's a routine. But why don't you try to make tomorrow a bit more different than today? Try to do something differently, experience something new. You never know where you might find a new passion or something that brings more joy to your life. And see, speaking about time and space and all that, it brings me back to my NASA project, which is partly the reason why I'm here today. So two and a half years ago, I was 15. Um, my principal walked up to me and said, I want you to participate in this competition. So of course, since adjectives were not quite in my vocabulary back then, I was young, my first thought was, wow, that was it. I just stopped there. And I thought to myself, what can I do to make the most out of this opportunity that was given to me? So I said, okay, I'll start learning about this space settlement. It's a very, very broad subject because we all know the problem of overpopulation, of pollution, of too few resources for ourselves. So then why don't we expand upwards, space? It's an infinite amount of space. We don't know the limit to space. So can we not imagine humans after being able to step on the moon, living there, having an independent settlement for our own use. And see, I began exploring these ideas of how we could try something new, new technology, surviving independently of Earth, somewhere in space, far from what we know as reality. And I finished a project in six months. It was long, I sent it away, and I thought to myself, okay, that's one stage of my life done, one decision I'm finally through with. Two months later, results came by, and I found out that I was the first place winner. So of course, going into this project, my first thought wasn't, I want to win this. My first thought wasn't, let me plan what I'll do afterwards. I just thought, it's a new experience, it's something new, let me try and see what happens. So I thought, okay, I won, that's amazing enough, it ends here, but it didn't. Two weeks later, I am invited to a talk show as well to give a speech about it. I get the opportunity to go to America to present my project. And then I think, okay, nice, it just gets better and better, but it stops there. It didn't. Now I'm here today, two and a half years afterwards, because of that project, because of that one small decision I took to participate in that competition. And it brought me here. So you see, the small decisions and actions we make years ago, the past somehow still manages to mingle with our future. And we never know how or when it does, but just know that all those small factors are what makes us ourselves. And see, it is this idea of how decisions are so important, how effects were once affected by a causation. That brings me about to this point of universes, of us being here, of our decisions and choices. Because even Stephen Hawking, one of the most renowned scientists, believed in parallel universes, believed in the power of choice. Say, five years ago on that day when you decided to wear a blue shirt, you wore a red one instead. That would generate a parallel universe as well. So why don't we see that even the smallest, most inconsequential, most unimportant decisions cause a much greater impact on our lives as a whole than we could ever believe it did. 
So what I want you to take away from my speech today is this idea of how you might think what you're doing right now is not important. You might think that one small decision only benefits you or your immediate family, but you never know how big your role truly is on this planet, how many lives you manage to touch and the people around you with just one very, very small action, one nice gesture, one word. So from now on, think to yourself, are you truly living? Are your choices the best ones you could be making? Are you making the most out of this gift of life that you were given? I mean, success is not defined solely by, I have a job, I have monetary value. Define success more about, in 20 years time, would you be able to tell someone your life story and impress them? If your grandchildren ask you what you did in your life, do you have something to tell them, to pass on, a legacy? And see here, if I told you, write a book in a week, could you write 100, 500, 1,000 pages, or would you blank out at 10? And see, this is what I'm trying to pass on, this message of how our decisions and how our choices should be our own and should be something to pass on to other people. Don't be afraid to step out of your own confines, your own boundaries that you created for yourself. Thank you very much.